and it's been all of a week since I've done this and normally I like to get out around about two videos per week uh, but this week my fantastic cousin also named James uh, got married over the weekend and I didn't have chance to film what I wanted but massive congratulations to my cousin James the wedding was fantastic anyway Welcome back to the RS6. Uh, this is the first drive video in this. When I say first drive, uh, people who have watched the collection video are probably thinking, what are you talking about, man? You picked up the car and drove it out of the showroom. What I mean by first drive is, when a car has been ran in, when it's done its first few hundred miles, I will typically then be able to open it up and spank it for all it's worth. Um, the sensitive issue with the RS6 is that even the first two hours of ownership of a brand new RS6 engine uh, is imperative that you take your time and run it in steady. And then it's the first 500 miles, which are also meant to be taken very steady. And then 500 to 1,000, you can, you know, use its power a bit and exploit its torque, but there's no sort of redlining or late braking or anything like that. So, the car is ran in. Do you know what? I've never expected the reaction to this car to be so popular. People seem to love it. The colour sometimes, okay, take it or leave it. Fortunately, the majority of the colour quotes online have been great. Uh, but just the general love for the RS6 generally has been amazing. And as you know, normally on this channel, it's uh, often about supercars. But now, we finally ha have a chance to run a regular daily what I would call super wagon, super estate. I guess it depends on what uh, side of the pond you're on. It's been great, so I'm really excited to share the adventures in this car because from the comments I've seen, people are excited about this car. So, what's been happening so far? Well, as we speak right this second, I'm about to have done 2,000 miles in the RS6. Uh, I've had it for just over two weeks, so when I say this thing is gonna be a daily driver, evidence is right there we are putting some serious miles on it I actually drove to the wedding in it that I just mentioned uh, and despite me doing lots of daily drives in the RS6 it's the first example it's the first time that I've used this car in exactly the kind of context that I expected uh, we packed this thing you know full of a few days worth of clothes and of course with us going to a wedding the lady liked to pack a lot more clothes than we actually needed um, so it was a great opportunity to do exactly what this thing was designed for it was packed to the hilt boot was full we had bags on the back uh, we had shoes stuffed down in the footwell I also brought my uh, camera laptop and all of my editing gear because never know and the wedding was also near Goodwood and this thing just took it all and there was also room to spare as well but the exciting bit is we did all of that in something that is just mind warpingly capable for the nature of the car that it is now let's just take a step back one second and just go through what this thing is so it's the V8 engine out of the original R8 that's its sort of base uh, obviously the engine's been reworked since then and they've gone and slapped on big ass turbos <laughs> and what this has given us in the RS6 performance uh, is 605 brake horsepower and enough torque to just twist your ears off when you put your foot down in this and you know you can be five people sat in this car bags full on your way down uh, some lovely country lanes and it is as, as composed as it is when it's empty you can just floor it and the performance is exactly the same it doesn't bat an eyelid um, and what's really impressive is that swell of torque is available pretty much all of the time now the engine characteristics naturally with it being a turbocharged car there is some lag um, I've been a bit spoiled lately because the turbocharged car that I've been driving around in has been a 675 LT um, and there is virtually no lag in that thing at all but that car also weighs you know 1300 and something kilograms whereas this thing is around about 1800 and considering it has that much weight and this much practicality I was having a chat 
with friends about this and uh, we were saying, you know, if you could have one car, and this is a bold, bold question, and let's keep this within the realms of reality. Let's not go one car, Bugatti Chiron. Um, if you could have one car that is, okay, it's expensive, but it's not in the leagues of the super crazy, um, you'd be hard pushed to find anything that does as many things as this thing does. Um, on the drive back from Goodwood, uh, I did have a bit of a brisk encounter with a BMW M3. Uh, it was raining, and as a result, I left that thing for dead. <laughs> um, and that's exactly where this thing comes in to its own. We've got all of these key attributes that people look for in a car, and oftentimes they'll go for one of them that means the most to them. Uh, that might be practicality, uh, performance, four-wheel drive, aesthetic sound. Um, if we look at those things in the RS6, it has pretty much all of them. Now, in terms of the aesthetics, if you read an article on this car, journalists will have you believe that Audi have done a very good job of subtly packaging uh, an insane monster in an otherwise unassuming shell. Uh, and to a degree, I suppose that's right. I mean, if you think of the fact that we're in a 605 brake horsepower car here, this is most certainly not the uh, conventional layout for a car of that nature. Having said that, when I see this car, every time I walk up to it, even when it's parked next to the F12 or GT3, it looks menacing. It has so much stance. The wide arches just flare it out and make it look really chunky. Uh, and that front end grille, especially with the obnoxious Quattro badge, <laughs> um, nothing says get out of the way like a big ass RS6 Quattro grille. So yes, so far, aesthetics, awesome. Wow, I'm driving down here slightly off topic. One, two, three, four, five AC Cobras have just driven past me. Five. Standard day out. Oh. So, looks we've just covered. Most people, if you're looking at an estate car or a station wagon type of layout, obviously one of the things on your mind is practicality. Now, at the risk of sounding like a dull car reviewer and talking about practicality and things like that, I can only vouch on my short experience with this car. I mentioned earlier that uh, you know I drove down to Goodwood for a wedding and we were packed with all sorts of gear and crap and it was brilliant and we had loads of space to uh, spare. Now, these super wagons, these super estate cars, they are a very niche product. If you think about what's happening here, you've got you know sort of high-end sports car performance um, in something that is conventionally practical. And I say it's niche because they're pretty expensive and they depreciate like a brick, <laughs> right? So while they are fantastic, because they are in a niche space, most people looking for this kind of layout in a car aren't always looking to go bloody fast as well. They're mostly concerned about having perhaps four-wheel drive and that extra sort of space. Whereas what this does is takes the power of an R8 uh, and puts it in something that, you know, you can travel quite happily with five in. You can have five in there, boot full. It almost feels like it performs better under load. It sort of just hunkers down a bit more and thanks you for using its capacity. Uh, it's pretty impressive stuff. When I went to Goodwood, uh, the weather was atrocious. Like, it was so bad. Um, and I don't know, I derived a bit of pleasure from like crunching through all this countryside dirt. Uh, clearly there'd been lots of like farming work going on in, in the area because the roads were just covered in crap. Uh, and I'd got like friends in the back, it was pouring it down with rain, and we were just cruising on pretty swift. Um, music playing, all the bags were there, you know, and everyone was just happy and we were getting on with it and this thing didn't struggle. In fact, I relished trying to find a situation where this thing would like break traction and I don't mean with throwing it around corners, I mean flooring it in second when there's mud and dirt and wet on the road didn't bat either, just, just it, my head just slams back into the seat and off it goes. So far, this thing is everything that I hoped it would be. Now then, practicality is one thing, aesthetics are another. The power in this thing, 
is beyond ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's not quite supercar, but just remove your brain from the supercar sphere for a second and appreciate what was sat in. And it's effectively some like nuclear tank. It's, it's, it's stupid, like the grip it's got as well, together with this power, just get a load of this action. Just farts and bangs and pops on the override all day long. And the gear shift doesn't hang around. Like it, when you, it does change down when you want it to. Um, I've driven some earlier, like conventional auto gearboxes, and sometimes you are, you do shift and think, yeah, that probably should have shifted about now. And then it hands you a gear, and you're like. Okay, this thing genuinely does go. <laughs> it's so stupid. I love it. Uh, yeah, so in this country, it's debatable whether this car is actually needed or not. I mean, <laughs> chances are that this car was designed because of the autobahn. I mean, who needs a 200 mile an hour estate car? Only the Germans. The fact that you could even spec carbon ceramic brakes in a car like this, I think is a fantastic thing. I'm not sure how long super estates are gonna be around for. I said earlier, they are quite niche. Uh, they're pretty expensive. I mean, they are everything that the you know Audi A6 is, but just a lot faster. <sighs> like. Estate cars shouldn't sound like that, but, but this is so cool. I mean, I'm sure, you know, these pops and bangs, they're probably heavily over-engineered, doesn't need to make that. But then again, they didn't need to even make this whole car. No one needs an estate car that goes this fast and is this capable. But as with all of these things, you know, a lot of the purchase decisions in the realms of supercars or in this realm, super estates, are all done with the heart. This is the sort of thing that you look forward to just crushing miles in. And so far, all 2012 that I've done now have been joyous from day one. Anyway guys, it is still early days with the RS6, but there's definitely gonna be a living with video coming with the RS6 where I'm gonna highlight all the pros and cons. Um, and we've gotta arrange a road trip. I think while this is a great car for your daily commute and just running around, um, I would imagine a trip to the Alps in the winter with this thing would be fantastic. Dudes in the back, skis on the roof, and I need to arrange that and just document the whole thing because not only would it just be hilarious fun, but I think it would be a true testament of the capabilities and character of this car. So, lots of adventures to plan so far, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Ciao.